Varsity Club, welcome back to another classic, and today, we've got some college football revamped. Now, I recently saw a comment asking us sort of about where's the toughest places to play and where do we rank? Well, I'm going to answer that. Now, obviously, we're not number one, two, three, four, five, not even in the top 10 at this point, but where we rank is still good. We currently rank at number 23 in the nation, and for a upstart program that's just starting to get its legs around them, this is good, but I got something even better. When you look at the number one win streak in the nation, it's us. We have a 19 game in a row home win streak. We've only lost on the road recently, and that's incredible. And we're ahead of programs like Oklahoma. I mean, App State and Boise, we don't really count them as major programs. Washington, Indiana, Texas, Michigan. We're ahead of all those programs, and that's crazy. And from a top 25 standpoint, yes, Oklahoma's ranked number one, but we're right there at number two ahead of Indiana, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Miami, and so many more schools that are so fantastic. We got a big chance here, but we played Maryland this week who barely lost to Indiana. Again, a top three team. So we got to make sure we're on our A game. And another reason to be on our A game is we have a couple of recruits visiting Shane Walker, Matt Wilson, and Brian Alvarez. But we also landed some recruits too. Now we've got David Clark, a 66 overall guard. We got Roy Ray, a 69 overall tackle. Uh, Udalane Atkins, a 68 overall guard. And the big one here is James Jackson, a 76 overall center. These are all massive gets and we got them all. And just to give you guys a little bit more insight, James Jackson is a plus nine gem. So this dude should have a fast track to being a starter for our team at some point down the future. Uh, Udalane Atkins is a plus nine as well. Roy Ray, a plus five. And David Clark, only a plus one. So I mean, he wasn't really that impressive, but a lot of these guys have very good ratings coming in. Udalane Atkins, is an 81 run block coming in james jackson a 79 uh pass block 78 run block and 83 impact blocking these guys are all going to be a major part of our line going forward and from a top class of standpoint on the recruiting side we're top five sitting at number four in the nation we have no five stars we have four or so we five four stars three nine or nine three stars and then one two star again things are looking bright in cascade valley we are battling a maryland team that is obviously struggling a lot but they're still a very very good football team you can see the rating wise they're not too far behind us but again they played indiana close last week they're playing good football now their quarterback is essentially injured he's probable for the game so you're more than likely to see him but their left tackle is doubtful meaning you gotta get some pressure on them and again if you look at their last three weeks in particular i mean they played actually four weeks they played michigan and lost by 18. they go up against penn state and get blown out by 31. then they turn things around the ohio state they lose by three and then you see for indiana they lose by seven this is a good football team that just has a bad record but they're playing good football at the right time of the year and even their backup quarterback has played fairly well i'd say for the most part didn't have a great game in the previous week but their running back is still averaging pretty solid yards a good touchdown production we've got to make sure that we make sure that we protect our offensive line cedric riley can get things going and we can get some points on the board early and again a quick little update because a lot of you guys have been requesting statistics we've got uh mcconnell again finishing his final season unfortunately with the injured broken shoulder uh, with 2,000 yards passing 22 touchdowns and four interceptions cedric riley two touchdowns three interceptions on 447 yards again He's a first time starter. He's coming in. He's figuring things out on the ground. Jason Barr crossed a thousand yards in the previous week with 10 touchdowns. McConnell had seven on the ground with 500. McFadden's got 185, but we'll talk about him in a second. Tom Baker's leading us with 34 grabs at 501 yards and five touchdowns. Jason Barr's got almost 300 with two touchdowns. RJ Riley's had a pretty good freshman year with 26 and 421. You can see a lot of our guys, our main three receivers are pretty much in the same area. 440, 420, 501. These guys right there have been the mainstay of our team. And on defense, Josh Cole has had, honestly, a pretty good year. A first time started coming in with 46 solo tackles, 11 of those being for loss, two sacks as well. Uh, from a sack perspective, you're seeing Jason Capps having 10. The senior is going out on a very high note right now. Mark Mullins, the true sophomore with eight. Patterson has four. Bobby Edwards has three. Sean, or Stephen Lowe has three. Mario Moses is kind of low here with two. You expect more production from him, but still he's getting pressure, just not the end result. And then interceptions, the true freshman Mike Hempel tied for the lead with John Hall, who we're all shocked by getting interceptions the last couple of weeks. It has been a good year for this defense. We just need them to finish strong because we got a lot of more work to do. Job's not finished. An updated look at the Big Ten West standings. We are 7-0 in conference, 9-0 overall. I was a 5-2. You're seeing Nebraska at 5-2. They are on our heels for sure. If you go over and look at the East standings, Indiana's holding that at 7-0, 9-0. Michigan's right there as well. But right now, if it ended today, we'd be facing Indiana. A lot of pressure in a lot of different areas, but one of those areas of pressure is definitely Cedric Riley being able to step up and be the leader of this football team with John McConnell, the four year starter out with a little man in motion here and Tom Baker, Jason Barr again, a dude that has all the talent in the world and get a lot of opportunities to shine today against Maryland. I know I alluded earlier in the video as well to talking about Khalid McFadden. Well, McFadden is no longer going to be in the backup running back conversation. His suspension is over, but 
he's definitely going to get an opportunity to shine potentially at receiver again, but he's not going to be in that starting four. He's going to be sitting at the fifth receiver spot. Coach Mervin McMurvin is not just going to hand that dude playing time after how he's sort of acted. And he's saying, look, if you're going to earn your playing time, we'll get you some packages. We'll get you some opportunities to play. But it's really up to him to shine and make the most of it to earn himself back a spot in the depth chart. The offense is looking absolutely phenomenal right now. Riley makes a quick adjustment here. Sits in the pocket, throws an absolute dot, and RJ Riley's going to keep things moving as he picks up about 20. Almost in the red zone, Jason Barr getting another opportunity to carry it up the middle. He's been so good this season. This man's averaging a whole lot of yards already. Here we go with second and three. Riley's had a beautiful drive so far. He's scrambling out a little bit here. They're going to sit back there respecting his ability to pass the football. He says, I'm going to take the nine yards. They don't have a lot of tape in this young fella, but he's making them know right now. You better look. First and goal. Right back to Barr, who's looking to find some room, and he gets to about the five-yard line here. And then he gets back up. He never went down, and he ends up losing two more yards, but he gets three in total. Second and goal. What the heck? We had a little bubble screen dialed up. That was supposed to go to Tom Baker, but it looks like they hit the back of the running back's helmet. So no bubble screen, but no turnover at the same time. Stewart's going to come in the game, and Sean Stewart gets a six-yard touchdown reception on his first touch of the afternoon. And the offense is looking good. We set the tone on offense. What can our defense ultimately do out here? They go immediately to the running game to Tim White, and Tim White picks up a whole lot more yards than we probably wanted. Defense has got to absolutely set the tone right now. Let them know they are not worthy to be in this field with us. A couple of things here, and look at the big hit by Cole. We obviously might give up some yards here and there, but I think the one thing our team knows is that if we hit them hard enough, they're going to be a little scared at some point in this game. Lowe doing his best to go underneath. Walton's going to bump him back a little bit. Hempel and company trying to bring him down, but O'Neal still picks up eight. Their quarterback is sitting pretty in the pocket. Not a lot of pressure on him. We need to do something to get to him to rattle him a little bit. They go with a little read option, and Moses brings him down for a loss of three. Mario Moses having a super productive year. You love to see what he's doing, man. The true sophomore is an absolute stud. And the QB is going to run again, and this time he goes to the other side of the line. He meets Mark Mullins and says, uh -huh. I'm also a sophomore, and I'm also going to have a pretty good year. All that does is create a massive third and 17. We're playing the pass the whole way. Got our guy sitting back in coverage a little bit. Our guy went for the wrong person. You got to be kidding me. He was supposed to go for the running back, but he went for the other guy. And here we are with fourth and four when it almost was a conversion. Now, Maryland pins us pretty deep about our own nine yard line or so. We're going to see what the offense can ultimately get here. Cedric Riley feeling great. And again, he's playing smart. He gets down and we're good to go again. The threat of our running game is absolutely still there. A lot of teams saw it. It might be gone after we lost McCollum. Nah, it's still going to be there. You can count on that. Quick little pass here, Tom Baker, who picks up a good amount of yards. Baker's obviously one of the more dynamic guys we have in the team, but I mean, a lot of our receivers that we have, especially these freshmen, are so good. And look at the fullback getting involved. I see you, Barrett. Riley's look really good today, four for five. Already has a touchdown pass out there. Love to see what he's doing. He's got a guy in Baker. He's going to hit him deep. Baker's got some moves here. Baker's got a guy in front of him. Can't get the block held by RJ Riley, but still 41 yards later, we're in scoring territory again. Give props where they're due. Riley looked pretty good with a throw on the run right there in the sideline. Had a guy open. He turned around. And the chemistry's been working. Look, you got to remember Riley again is our backup quarterback and has been sitting, you know, working with a lot of these younger guys, especially in the offseason. Before we knew some of these guys were going to be starters on our team or positions might be moving around a little bit. Who was out there? But Cedric Riley and John McConnell getting in tons of reps with both of those guys. And it paid off to have both of those guys get those reps. Big opportunity here. See what our guys got. Riley across the middle. It's Mike Hampill. Mike Hampill with the rare appearance on offense is an absolute speedster. And he showed it on that route. The offense looked absolutely fantastic there. Here we go. First quarter winding down. We got a 14 point lead. They're going the little read option. Cole's going to miss on that one. They're going to stiff arm a guy out of his soul. Conley misses that tackle. And then John Hall finally forces him out of bounds. This offense has definitely struggled for Maryland at times this year, but they're not bad. They can still put points to the board. Tim White has been really good for them. They know they've got a stud in him, but. They just had to get him the ball more. A little second and short, first quarter, almost done. They go with a halfback draw. Tim White forces his way through. So Hemphill brings him down after six. Probably one of the last plays here in the first half. QB's under center. Moving their man in motion a little bit. Lowe's going to watch the middle. Little play action. The QB's going to start running. We had no one on that side of the field. Steven Lowe might have torn that dude's ACL, but Ryan Harris picks up 18, and they're looking good. Maryland's starting to feel really good. They're driving. Our defense is giving up points, giving up yards. Excuse me, not points, but they're giving up yards. But we've got to make sure we get tackles because Tim White is fighting every single time we get contact on him. Second and inch is heavy formation here. Looks like eye formation almost for them. They go with the run. It's a delayed one, and Conley's in there to clean it up to make him lose a yard. Here we go. Third and one. Running back goes in motion. 
The quarterback keeps it. John Hall's going to try to get to him. John Hall's trying to force the fumble. He can't rip that ball out, and Harris goes for 14 more. It is absolutely the rushing attack, especially led by the QB, more than it is anything else right now that's hurting us. And the QB sets off a tackle from Josh Golden. And Ryan Harris, excuse me, I'm cutting the lead in half. Not ideal, to be honest. Give Maryland a little bit of hope. And again, they've stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with a lot of big progress, but they haven't seen a guy like Jason Barra here who just broke some ankles. He's got reservations for six and chilies. Barra is going to have one of the longest runs of his career. And the man is going just like that. One of the most iconic runs in Jason Barr's career. And he's had some great ones. That's what you want to see from the young fella. And what we don't want to see is this right now. Is this quarterback continues to kill us? We got a QB spy almost every play. I don't understand why we're running so deep coverage. It shouldn't be man deep, but with the read option like this, we might as well. All right, they force us to literally <laughs> QB spy every single play. So here we are, pinch the line a little bit. They go with a little bubble screen. We got two guys there, they'll make a third and short. We're in the first half, and Garner Conley already has an insane amount of tackles. Six for him, I believe one of those being for a loss. He's been all over that team today. Their quarterback's going to throw one in Cole. Dwayne Cole can't turn around in time. And it's 28 yards later for Carl Hansen. Maryland again, getting hope. Back-to-back -back drives potentially being scores for them. Not what we want to see. They go for the dump off. Walton forces the guy out of bounds, and he gets two. Keeping Josh Cole this time in a QB spy. Let it low, try to get a little bit of pressure. They go up the middle. You're kidding me? Tim White is different. That man is different. The absolute embarrassment that our tackling game is sometimes is just its catastrophic. Third and short. They're packed in a little heavy here. Their main running backs are in. They're going to halfback screen, though. We got Caps and Smith Patterson, and Patterson's going to bring him down for a loss of three. It's field goal time. So Maryland's kicker, who isn't super highly rated, we're going to see if he can ultimately do here. Looks like Tim White actually got hurt. I think he had a bruised sermon with the injury report said, but he'll be back. Uh, I'm assuming the next time they get the ball. This kick is fading fast, but it is good. And Maryland cuts the lead to 11. I can't get over the fact that Jason Barr has just been electric today. That run that he had to cap off that drive was just a thing of beauty. It shows just how talented and how skilled he is. And we also don't have John McConnell. That's a little bit of inaccuracy from Cedric Riley. But even with Cedric Riley back there, I still feel good about this offense. They have tons and tons of capabilities. They've got a guy that can sling it out there. We have tons of talented young receivers that can sort of grow with him over the next couple of years. Now, Riley's obviously had some bad moments so far in the little limited time he's had. But right now, he's looking pretty good. Two touchdowns already here in the first half. He's making, for the most part, really good decisions. And if they're going to let this man run, Riley says, I'm going to get those yards pretty easy. It absolutely pains me, though, to say that John McConnell does get an opportunity to close out his senior season as a four-year starter with an opportunity to win a national championship and lead this team. It hurts. There are varying reports with the severity of his injuries. Some people say that it actually um, is pretty damaged. It's going to mess him up, even though it's a non-throwing shoulder injury. His ability to sort of put torque on the ball is just not going to quite be there. We're going to ultimately see what happens to him. But right now, we're worried about Robert Raw trying to extend this one into the end zone. They push him out of the eight-yard line. A storyline to watch for sure is going to be, does John McConnell get to the NFL? Does he get drafted? Are teams worried about his injury history? What happens with his injury history? Is he going to be able to be fine? Is he not going to be fine? Is he the same quarterback? There's so many questions about him. But there is one thing I can say for sure. As we move into a new stadium with new jerseys and all of those things, if for some reason McConnell doesn't have the NFL career that maybe he wants to have, and if we get an opportunity for an offensive coordinator position to be open, we're absolutely happy to have John McConnell here. Just like we're happy to have Sean Stewart in the backfield in the end zone yet again. First and 10. Maryland's down 18. They're going with the read option. They've been so run heavy, and this quarterback is actually doing really well right now. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say in the passing game he's doing well, but in the running game, he's been absolutely torching us. We're trying to QB spy almost every time. The running game, who now has Tim White back in the backfield, has been good, but right there, Mullen says, oh, not on my watch. Big opportunity here. Need to get a little bit of pressure on third and eight. We got a lot of our guys pinched up. Doing a little bit of press coverage. Watching the quarterback. We dare the quarterback to run right now. He throws it. There's two guys there. This one is Tom Baker. Obviously, you know he's got hands. He plays on offense, and Baker is going to pick one off. I think his first career interception, he's a two-way player. Hampill's a two-way player. We got a whole bunch of people that can play both sides of the ball. That quarterback had all day, all day, and still couldn't find a guy open. That just blows my mind. First down, Riley. 
A lot of time. He's going to dot up RJ Riley, who gets a four yard grab, and that was a whole lot more difficult than it probably should have been. I mean, look, Riley's issues are mostly with accuracy. We know his arm will get a little bit stronger as time goes on, but the accuracy is what sort of worries us the most about him. Speaking of that, he drops back and does an absolute dot here to Baker, who is having a monster day so far. 20 yard touchdown back in the end zone. This dude's electric. Things are getting tough for Maryland. They had an opportunity. They had a window. They were within 11 points. They were within seven at one point, too. But right now, the walls are closing in. Just like our defense is closing in on them right now. Going to keep our guys deep in coverage here because we know that quarterback can obviously run, but they're probably going to want to try for some deep stuff as well. Just keep everybody in front of them and don't let them go deep. Maryland actually might be going and chewing the clock. And I don't blame them. The way we're putting up points right now, we're up 25. Our offense has looked incredible. Their quarterbacks turned it over recently. I expect to run here and then just to chew the clock and get up out of here and go into halftime and pray that we decide to stop abusing them in football right now. And look at Steven Lowe. Secures the tackle, keeps him short, and that'll take us to halftime. Okay, I stand incorrect. They actually called a timeout after running the clock down because they got to this part of the field? I don't understand. Some pressures on them. They throw one deep. We got a couple of guys there. John Hall nearly has it, but Ray Walton deflects it out of his hands. We're going into halftime with a 25-point lead. We have held Maryland to a spot that I didn't think we would do. They are a high-powered offense who has struggled on defense, and right now, they can't do anything right against us. Now, Maryland's coach reportedly said, look, we got to get something going on defense because, or excuse me, on offense to start the half, because if we don't, CVU will run away with this one pretty quickly. And just like that, they're down the field. Oh, that's actually an incompletion. Okay, I take it back. Oh, they're going to review this one? Let's see what he's got here. He goes up. Nah, that man's out of bounds. What? They reverse it? Cowards. Okay. I'm a little shocked by that, to be perfectly honest with you. But you know what? It's not the end of the world. We'll be fine. They go with a little pass in the backfield. And Garner Conley, again, having a fantastic day. Drops him for a loss of seven. That was the eighth tackle of the game for Garner Conley. That dude has been all over the field today, especially in the backfield. You'd love to see what he's doing for the squad. Trying to get some pressure. Cole is bringing in some pressure. And Cole's going to bring him down. You'd love to see the linebacker get involved like that. Third down, 20 yards to go. Maryland's probably at a field goal range knowing their kicker at the moment. And he just absolutely gets obliterated. It has to throw that one immediately. All right, so they're going to line up for a field goal. I don't know if I truly trust they can get this one. This is about a 52-yarder. I think they were kind of not even close to making one of those earlier. Hemphill all can't get that one, but still, it's no good. We go to the studio update here. We see that Michigan is blowing out number three, Indiana. Michigan's making a play to get back in the college football playoff. Six minutes left here in the third. All the time in the world. And Cedric Rouse says, I got some places to be. Riley is out here scooting himself down to the 45. First down again for the offense. Riley has led some fantastic drives. But I think the threat of the run game has really been a crucial part of what's happening today. And Riley has just kept the chains moving time and time again. Him and Barr have been electric. Speaking of Barr, it's been a minute since he touched the football. We're going right back to him. All this man has done today is just do successful things. And he's going to keep the things moving with another five. Barr has ran the ball under 10 times. Has over 100 yards rushing. He's an incredible talent who we've got to make sure we utilize more. Got guys out there in the open field looking crazy, but that dude sticks him pretty hard. Looking for a little blocking. Outside runs have been a little tough. Sometimes our receivers don't necessarily get the blocks they essentially need to get. Barr doesn't quite get the blocks he needs either, and he gets right back to the line, but nothing else. Second and 10, Riley feels pretty gassed, and he immediately gets drilled. No blocking whatsoever on that play for him. I mean, you want to talk about what ended up getting our guy John McConnell hurt year after year after year? It's stuff like that where they can't block for him. That's how that dude got hurt over the course of years. A 99 injury rating is what he had, but it doesn't matter when you hit that much. No one can save you. So for the first time today, we ended up punting the football. Again, not ideal, but it's just what we ended up coming out with. We couldn't get anything going on offense, and we got deep in their territory, and we just had to play smart. Yes, I get it. We're absolutely blowing them out right now, but you don't win games against good teams like Maryland if you start doing some risky things. You just don't. The one good thing we've done on defense is hold them on third down conversions to be two for seven. Anytime you can do that, you can say talented offensive team, you're going to be in a good spot. They're going to halfback screen, though. Cole is there, and he's playing so good this season, especially in today's game. With Maryland being so deep, Hemphill's got some opportunity to return one. Let's see what the young fella can do. Fourth and 18. They're sitting inside our 15, or their own 15. This is going to be not a great punt, which means that we've got an opportunity to return. Hemphill! I mean, it felt like he had an opportunity to get a big return there, but... Man, in case of fumbleitis and drop that one immediately. Barr tries to get out to the edge, but again, only three yards are waiting for him. 
Second and seven. They're being pretty heavy here. Underneath, Robert Rolfe is going to try to find a way to get close to the first down marker, but he's still two yards shy. Believe it or not, that is the first catch we've had all game by Robert Rolfe. Blows my mind. That dude has got to be more involved in the offense. That's a failure on our part to only get him the ball one time as we're halfway through the third. Nah, we got to do better. Speaking of Rolfe, he's got solo coverage over there on the right-hand side, but because the play action fake took six years, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. I'm so happy that we're getting offensive linemen because, good Lord, do we need them. It's an embarrassment of how bad we've been on the offensive line side of things. Second and 24, Riley. Looking to see what his guys can do. Got a guy wide open across the middle, and it's Roth, and he leads him a little too far, but he somehow makes some ridiculous catch to extend his arms. He says, hold up. I got you, Riley. I got you. Three for four on third down conversions. Despite the weirdness of today's game, it's it's been good overall. As a team, this has been great. Oh, over the top. We got a man. We're throwing it deep, and Ryan is going to hold that one in. 37 yards. It is barely over the corner's head. What a ridiculous throw and catch. I'm here for it. This is an opportunity to really sound them out. We got a massive lead. We could probably get some of our backups in, which is crazy to think about that our backups would play in when we have already some backups starting because of some injuries, and they could get some extra experience. But at the same time, I want to make sure some of our starters can get the stats they ultimately need. Robert Roth, for example, hasn't gotten a ton of receptions. RJ Riley, we'd like to get a little bit more involved uh, from a reception standpoint. There's so much work that needs to be done to just pass some of these dudes' stats, so that's top of mind as well. I mean, let's not forget Jason Barr is literally having a crazy game, had a monster first half, and we've kind of sort of went away from him, so... That's on us. But look at this big hits from the, the linebackers and from our guys on the edge. Third down, four yards to go. Maryland needs this conversion. It's probably four down territory for them, honestly. They go to a halfback screen again. It hasn't worked out for him a ton. And White goes short out of bounds as he gets tripped up by Josh Cole. They opted to punt on fourth and two at the midfield. I get it. You're getting blown out. We got to give your team some semblance of hope. Even with the punt, we get the ball back in midfield. Their kicking special teams game is not great. And you're seeing why. Now with the recruits in town, we still need to get some yards that are a little bit better. So we're trying to make sure we get some passing yards to really fill out the stat categories that we need. A lot of our guys going deep. We got a close one and Willis is going to haul in a ridiculous throw that should not have been thrown, but it's somehow caught and we're okay with it. 230 through the air, four touchdowns. Riley can't be mad at it at all. A lot of guys here in the backfield. Sean Stewart in for Jason Barr in this one. Stewart goes through the middle, fights through when he's inside the five. It does look like we've sort of put in a lot of our backups already. We're obviously keeping in the backup quarterback. Um, probably part of that is because, well, he's already in the game because McConnell's out. But you might still see Seth Sanders get an opportunity because Sean Stewart right now, the man's already got two touchdowns. This is probably more than what Jason Barr has had today. The offense has not been missing beats. This receiver core has helped out Riley so much today. The offensive line has done, for the most part, their jobs, but there's still some work to be done. Fowler can't get to the quarterback, but we do see Mullins ultimately get him down all the way. That was the second sack of the game for Mark Mullins. He already has three tackles for loss, four total tackles. He's been everywhere today. Love to see the pressure we're getting from the, the defensive line. Harris all the time in the world again. He's trying to find some room. We got guys looking to get to him, and it's just we got a QB spy. First down again, six minutes left here. Maryland is desperately just trying to get some points on the board. Quarterback's trying to run. Steve Lowe is not having it. Not at all. I mean, at this point of the game, they're in chuck it mode, and we're just playing the pass literally nonstop. They actually go with a run. Okay, I lied. Things we didn't expect. That dude to run through 800 people and get the first down. Maryland keeps the pressure going, but their quarterback is absolutely gassed. Would not be surprised if he runs again if he forced a fumble, but he doesn't have to run when he's got dudes catching balls like that. We haven't seen Mike Hempel give up a ton of receptions so far this season, especially in today's game, but he definitely got burned on the inside on that one. They go to the edge this time. That's Fowler getting torched by Harris for seven. Fleming Jr. actually had the wind knocked out of him. We're not going to see him for a couple of plays, but still keep the pressure they go with the halfback screen again we got low there who is sniffing that out they've run it way too much we're diagnosing it and we're making sure they don't get anything off of it i've been pretty happy with how our defense has played so many players are stepping up we've had some areas where guys haven't really made the tackles we've wanted them to make but for the most part these dudes are all over it. dwayne cole excuse me i mean how many times have we seen dwayne cole make a play that just makes you scratch your head and then now he makes a play like that which i scratched my head for an entirely different reason. That was a W. On offense, though, I do feel bad for Jason Bardis because he had such a crazy start to this game, and we sort of we went away from him a little bit. And at the end of the day, I hope he figures out that we still want to preserve him for the end of the season as we get closer to the playoffs, but I feel like he deserved a 200-yard game, and we just couldn't get it to him today. Still, he's been incredibly consistent. A buck 30 in the ground is nothing to be angry about. 
uh, the attempts, the yardage he got. It's all something to be happy about. And that dude is lethal whenever he touches the football. We just got to make sure we get him the ball in the right spots and allow him to flourish. So the last drive for Maryland was obviously an interception, but we need the ball and we need about 15 or so passing yards to make sure that we can get uh, our recruits pretty happy. And is that Mark Mullins getting another sack? Three in one game is tying the record for Cascade Valley. And Mullins, a true sophomore, he's still got a chance to break it. I believe that record is held by Landon Rawls. We can check, obviously, after uh, the game, but I'm pretty sure that was Landon Rawls record before. But if Mullins breaks it, we'll get a 100% confirmation. Second and 15, they slide a guy over. We bring a double blitz. They got a couple of guys and Garner Conley might have 10 tackles after that one. This dude's been everywhere. They are two for 10 on third down conversions. Unreal stops by the defense today. Love to see it. Two and a half minutes left. They throw to the edge and that's not getting you anything. With the ball deep in our own territory again, we need 250 pass yards in the afternoon to make sure that we've got the yards we need. And I think we'll be in a good spot to do that here on this drive. Close one and Clayton McFadden. We haven't called that name on the receiving side in a long time. His two game suspension obviously has been a little rough for people to talk about, but still, we know he's a weapon. We know he can obviously do well for this team. He's just got to keep his head straight. Second and six here. Riley under center is going to keep Baker in motion from the right hand side. It's like Sean, or see, that's actually minor. I thought it was going to be Sean Stewart leaking out of the backfield, but it's actually going to be Anthony Minor for 10 yards. That officially gives us the 250 plus pass yards. Raleigh was 17 for 19 today. I think we've really had smart offensive play calls that have lent themselves to him being productive like that, but still, he's executed. And still at the same time, there's work to be done. Stewart trying to find his way through. Kind of ran the wrong direction, but it is productive and he gets three. I realize the game is winding down. There's not a lot of time left, but we're absolutely trying to run the score up right now. We want to make sure that every team knows they should be fearing us. Back across his body. This was going to be Gavin Hall and Gavin Hall gets the first one, but there is a flag in the play. I imagine that comes back on us or it's a late hit. I like turtles. Or it's holding on the offense, which obviously hurts. First and 20, again, we're still going to keep some pressure on them, trying to get some points on the board here. We throw one, and that's Gavin Hall. He's all still making a play. We're calling a timeout. We're getting back in that end zone. Jeremy Willis, the only real receiver we have in the game at the moment. Willis is out here floating. We're tossing one up, and that drops in his hands. What an absolute dot by Ryland. We're calling our second timeout. 300 yards in the day. Swain's in the game now. We got Baker back in the game. Let's see what Riley's got. He's moving. He's got Stewart leaking, and Stewart is going to get in the end zone. Sean Stewart is a gem. Look, I know some people were upset that we didn't keep McFadden back at running back when we came back in, but this play shows you why. Sean Stewart got this ball, runs over a DB, keeps going, keeps fighting, and he's in the end zone just like that. And that crazy drive is going to seal this game up. Cedric Riley looked absolutely fantastic today. Stepping right in for what McConnell has been doing. 300 yards, five touchdowns, 10 carries, 47 yards. That's my quarterback right there. Recapping the stats again, Riley, 20 of 22, 315 yards, five touchdowns. He got sacked three times, but honestly, a lot of that is going to be on the offensive line. He did what we needed him to do today, kept the ball in really good spots and put the ball where only his receivers could really make the play. On the ground, Barr had a solid game still, 14 attempts, 120 yards, one touchdown along a 75, one of the best runs in his career, in my opinion. Riley chimed in with 47. Sean Stewart at 8 for 46 and two touchdowns as well. And Robert Rawl had a big 39-yard game that almost went into a touchdown. On the receiving side, RJ Riley. Early, he was going on really well. Four for 78 and one touchdown. Baker at three for 79 and a touchdown. Barr didn't really do much. Willis had a couple of grabs late. Roth got involved late. But Sean Stewart, two grabs, 17 yards and two touchdowns. Included that last one, which was wild. Stewart is going to be a great compliment, I think, to, to our guy Jason Barr. is just making sure he gets some touches so he doesn't transfer away from us. He's a special talent. But we got Hall, Miner, McFadden, and Hemphill all involved, as well as Barrett. That might be the most players that have ever caught a pass in one game in school history. On defense, Garner Conley was everywhere. 11 total tackles, 10 of those being solo. Uh, Sean Lowe had six as well. We see tackles for a loss. We had four for Mark Mullise, five of his total tackles. Three sacks for him, tying a school record as well, stepping up big. Josh Cole had a sack, as well as Stephen Lowe and Mario Moses. Interceptions we had two today. Tom Baker doing what you didn't think he was going to do, showing up on defense strong. And then Dwayne Cole coming in with a nasty reception in the corner of the end zone. I'm here for it. Games like this are important because we need a team that is skilled, but we can ultimately blow out to give our team tons of confidence. We lost John McConnell. He is one of the best. I will, I'll say it right now. He is the best player to ever come through Cascade Valley. But with our young quarterback and Cedric Riley stepping up and leading this team, I got hopes that a national title is still in the cards. Be safe, be smart, tell somebody you love them. Catch you guys in the next one.